right, guys. So I think we should start at this headstrong and go into uh, the rulers of this world, the rulers of evil, the illuminated ones. Illuminated. Um, I think, you know, with Keith, you starting the prayer, I think you should really start with this this topic of who rules this world and, and why and what their agenda is. So th there is a there is a text right that we are familiar with. Uh, we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers um, in high places. And although this this text, which is you know, I was trying to look for, look it up, but I couldn't find it. But anyway, you could Google it. I think it's an Ephesians something. Ephesians, right? Okay. It's Ephesians <laughs> six ten through twenty. Okay, perfect, perfect. So I'm going to go over there so I can read it verbatim. Ephesians 6, right, you said? Mm -hmm. And 6.13, you said? 10 through 20. Okay. Oh, 10 through 20. Yes, 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places, where it's just in high places in the King James Version. Um, so with, with this in mind, you know, we're not dealing with, <laughs> we're not dealing with mere men uh, in, in when, when, it, when it talks about the rulers of, of this world. Now, we know from scripture that Satan claims to be the ruler of this world. Now, you may be asking, well, I thought that God was, is the owner of this world, right? How is Satan all of a sudden the ruler of this world? And that's a valid question. Uh, and I, I want to just briefly, if I may, kind of give, give, give the scenario as to why it is that we have the situation we're in now. You know, because if, if God is supposedly the ruler, you know, why do we have this situation? This is important to, to know. Okay. So, but quickly, when, when Adam, when Adam sinned and he listened to Satan, he, he essentially, by doing what Satan suggested to do, right, through deception, I, I know it was, he didn't know and all this stuff, but through, su through suggestion, Adam gave up the rulership that God had given him and gave it to Satan. By by by, it's 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 kind of like it's kind of like like uh, similar to um, uh, what's uh, Jacob's brother Esau giving up his birthright, you know, through decept through deceptive means, right? But he gave it up anyway to the falling angel and now when we go into the book of job when he goes to god when when there's a there is a uh a, a, a world uh you know universal council of some sort where the sons of god meet together the sons of god by the way are not angels uh the sons of god are the atoms of the unfallen worlds adam is not there but who's there in, instead satan is there and when he's when he's asked, "What are you doing here?" Satan replies, "From going through and forth on the earth." Basically, he's basically saying, "I am the ruler of the earth. I represent earth." And when Jesus, when uh, when God says to Satan, "Have you considered my servant Job?" He's actually saying that Job is a should be a son of God because he's obedient to me. And this is where the, where the where the situation happens with Job, and we know the story there. So that's what's that's what's really happening. So the usurper of the earth is Satan, and he claims this world for himself. Now, so so why is if God is a ruler, why doesn't he take him out? Well, the, the 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 reason is simple, because the the first our first father, right, Adam, gave up his rulership to Satan, right? 
but through will, we are under his subjection. We were subjected to him now. In that, in the sense, now in the sense, like, okay, he's now kind of like have us hostage. But now a new ruler has come in the person of God, Jesus, came in to live per at the perfect life, obedient to God, to dislodge now the, the, the rulership that, that Satan has over him. But that doesn't mean, though, even though God is still is the rightful ruler, that doesn't mean that Satan is going to give up his rulership easily. That the, even though he has been, you know, by all means and purposes, been this large of, of, of being like the ruler of this world, of this earth, it does not mean that he's going to give up his rulership. It, nevertheless, it, anyway, it was never his in, in the first place. But now that Jesus came in and, and had the victory, he's not, uh, to this day, he's not giving up. And he's going to do whatever he can to deceive the world into think into having them thinking that he's still the ruler, you know, instead of God. So, with that background in mind, now we know that there there are several things that are happening that many of us have no, we're not aware of of of, of who really is actually running things on this earth, and it is an evil power, and this dark power that happens rules in a very specific way it rules from the top down and it rules with fear and it rule it rules with force those are the those are the three things that are probably like are sound the alarm as to which how it is that that, that, that things work in this world and by the way, many of us have bought into this idea that force is necessary in order to keep order and peace and all this stuff in check because this is the way that we have seen it. This is the way that we have grown up in it. This is the way that since we were like babies have known. You know, force is the way that, you know, you make things right in this world. You know, anyway. But to, but, but to really answer your question, Zach, who rules the world ultimately? Is this fallen angel, the spirit, you know, which, which the Bible uh, calls Lucifer? We actually don't know his actual name, but Satan is the one who rules the world. And he uses a very specific way uh, to promote certain people who will acknowledge him as God as the God of this world, and he gives advantages to these people to, to do and to rule according to his methods. His entire agenda, and there's one, one agenda that he has, his entire agenda is to destroy the image of God in man, however he can do. Because that is the opposite is what God intended to do, is to restore the image of God in man. And say it is Satan's purpose to destroy that however he can. So in this earth, we have this clash, this controversy that we have, where we have uh, the, 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 the followers of this fallen angel and the followers of God come together. And those who are on the side of love kindness, peace, all that are going to come, obviously, in, a, in, in conflict with those who want to use force, power, and selfishness to, 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 um, to, to promote themselves. So that's, that's basically the, the, the answer to your question, Zach. Who rules this world? It is Satan, and he uses men and women who are willing to uh, acknowledge Knowledge him as God uh, to do to do his bidding. So he has a it's 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 a pyramid type of situation where you know very few at the top that he has promoted, you know, give the orders and the orders come from him, and then they go and promote this this thing where the masses, most of the people at the bottom, right? The pyramid is wider at the bottom, serve the person at the top.
Now, uh, Kim, what are your thoughts? Simply put, there are organized groups of people throughout um, royalty and politics around the world that have been working to unite for a long time because I think Satan's been at this since the beginning and been trying since the Tower of Babel to overcome the language barriers and separation that God caused. Um, and you can see it. Like I used to think evil was at random. And then when I started waking up and looking into stuff and seeing how, how, how actually like how it's so there's, there is an agenda and you can see it layered throughout different countries and places all over the world. And it's undeniable as you start looking into it, you start seeing all these dark systems and, and it's really interesting how you, how like you can look into the like child trafficking or you can look into like Bohemian Grove or you can look into the different um, secret societies. And if you look into it far enough, it will always lead back to something from the Bible. Always. I found it so weird that some of the like, you know, like when I heard about like Bohemian Grove and stuff that it went back to like Canaan like it always goes back to the Bible if you look at it far enough and I find that really fascinating for anyone out there who doesn't believe it just quit looking at it from the dimension of the world and tr follow trails and you'll start to see weird parallels with the Bible and ask yourself why like why so yeah I think there's darkness from myself and my own personal experience you know, coming to realize that God is love and that his methods are um, truth and freedom and love and Satan's methods are force and coercion and um, and selfishness, really. Um, but I look back at myself when I was, when I wanted nothing to do with God. And... Um, I see that there are certain things that protect us. Like I was, I wanted to be really successful, but I wasn't willing to do it in a crooked way. Like I didn't want, I wanted to be successful in an honest way. Like I didn't want to take advantage of other people to get there. Like that wasn't something I was willing to do. I respected other people's freedoms, whether I liked people or not, I still respected other people's freedoms. And that was a protection for me against getting accepted into higher and darker ranks of Satan's realm. Right. So like if we were you offered that? No, but even if I was, but, but we are though, like every choice we have is an offer. It's a, it's a choice towards God or away from God. Right. If you're put in a situation to where you could, um, let's say you had a, let's say you had like a work, like a, a job opportunity, but you had to take advantage of someone or do something that you thought was dishonest or do, you know, or just do something that was out of character. Like, do you do it because you want that promotion or do you hold to your character? Which one do you value more? Like, these are the choices that we all have to make every day. It's not this magical thing that Satan comes in and is like, oh, I'm going to give you everything you want if you give me your soul it's not like that movie movie series supernatural we have actual choices to make where it's um you know like are we going to value our character and grow as a stronger person or are we going to become more and more selfish and have a, a more hardened heart because we're so important that no one else matters we'll but do whatever that, it takes but not that that doesn't happen right Oh, it does happen, and it happens. It does happen, in, right? It, it happens in each of us to in varying degrees, right? We have our boundaries. We have our boundaries. Like I'm not going to go past this, and like even when I was godless and going in a certain direction, I still had my boundaries of respect for other people that I wasn't going to cross, no matter the cost. Like money wasn't important enough. When I lived in California in my 20s, I met lots of people. I met lots of rich old men, and there were several of them. Like I could have married into that but it's like 
I don't love you. I don't right, want a relationship right. with, with someone that's older than my father. I want to be your friend, but I, I don't want to join my life with you. Like there are, we have choices to make and the choices we make determine our life. Right. So we have to remember, like we are an active player. God gave us the power of our mind and he gave us the ability to think and choose for ourselves. So like, what are we valuing the most? For me, I wanted, I was valuing money the highest, but I still had some morals that I wasn't willing to let go because I didn't want to become that person. Like I didn't, I knew that like, I knew that there, I would, I would lose more worth by letting that portion of my character go than I would gain, you know? And those are protections. And those are things that kept me, kept the Holy Spirit working in me even though i didn't realize it Do you know what i'm saying so like god is there watching out for us and the choices we make in every stage of the game matter more than we can comprehend and even if we are making really poor choices <clears throat> like i you know like i was pretty godless and i was pretty selfish in a lot of ways but I valued freedom. I valued other people's freedom. And I was nice to people. I would never go hurt someone. I would never go say something mean or hurt their feelings. Like when I was a kid, I hated seeing animals get hurt. I hated seeing people get bullied and I'd stand up against them. Like those are things that hold our character because all of life is about character. So I think that that's important to remember, like that we have to be responsible and accountable for our, the choices we're making because that's the greatest privilege that God gave us is the choice. And then looking to Jesus, like Jesus shows us how this game goes, right? He shows us how God works and how men work. So in Jesus, we can see that Jesus <laughs> like came and was the least self like the like completely selfless total love right came understood god he built <laughs> he built reality you know he built everything but yet he was humble and teaching he came down to our level and was teaching at our level and in the beginning it just was like oh <clears throat> you know like no one even knew who jesus was we don't even really hear about him until his personal ministry but then he starts going out and draw audiences are wanting to come see him he's starting to he's starting to get the masses like and over time the jews and those guys weren't weren't out to plot christ's murder until he started building a big enough following to where they were like oh wait a minute we're gonna lose our our um our station so <clears throat> we have to remember like it's not just like oh i'm a nice person everyone hates me it's like over time people see like oh, hey, there's something here. And then other people want that too because they want love. They want to get out of slavery. They want that. And then as as people start waking up, you look at the people that came after Christ's day and they were killing all of them and it wasn't working, right? They were killing all of them. More people were converting. Instead of people getting scared, they realized there's something more powerful than fear. And then, and then that's when Satan starts attacking and then Satan realizes like, oh, I can't kill everybody. So let's outsmart them. Let's go in and infiltrate. Let's go, let's go mix truth with, air, you know, make really close counterfeits and steal them. If I can't kill them, let's steal them, right? But with Jesus, we see that we see the journey because I think really people want to know that God is love. People want to be better. They want to find freedom from what they're in. They just don't know how. They need someone to come and teach them and, and share and testify and glorify the name of God through the character of God. They need to see it. They need to experience. They need to taste it. Like, that's what people need. We need to hear it. We need to, like, we need an experience with it. We need our own experience of someone showing us the love of God that changes our lives. And from there, people want to change. And... And then as more and more people change, then I think you see Satan's like, oh, we got to, we got to, we got to take them out. We got to take them out. If I can't, if I can't lie my way into their hearts and they're standing against me, then okay, then, and they're drawing more people. Okay, now it's time to take them out. I think that's what the battle is. It's not just 
it's not just like, oh, I love God and now I'm everyone hates me. It's like, oh, I love God and people are, are seeing it. People are changing. So there's so now there becomes a battle because the, the power that Satan has, he doesn't want to let go. And then that's when the people plotted. They the Jewish leaders had to plot and had to bring together church and state so they could have enough power to overtake Jesus, to overtake Christians. And that's what's coming. Is that when there's a true revival where real the truly the character of Jesus is starting to reflect people are no longer scared of the threats and they stand for God through them then you'll see the holy spirit the latter rain come and you'll see satan trying to put every like do whatever he's going to do to to end <laughs> the remnant so, um, so we always have to look to Jesus because he's the answer to everything. Satan knows that this is coming and the governments and the royalty and the systems around the world. And you can see it like the, you can see how they're banding together. And it says in, uh, Daniel that the, they sit, they look like they're at odds, but they sit at the same table. And, and you can see that, like Republican and Democrat, but they're all at the same parties. You can, you, you can see that with the different leaders around the world. Like one day they hate each other, the next day they're friends. It's like, who is who? And the thing is, is like, I used to get into politics because I thought that I was getting pretty heavy into politics because I thought that might be a way to change things. But the thing is, is like, you can't use the methods of Satan to win this battle. We have to use the methods of God. and we know how the battle is going to end on in this sin stained earth. And um, all I know is that I want the seal of God in my forehead when the winds are loose. I do not want to not have the seal of God and be at the complete mercy of Satan and all the people that have a hardened mind and a hardened heart. I do not want to be there. Like if I'm there, Please give me the armor of God and the Holy Spirit to protect me through that because I don't want to be there without the protection of God with only my own power and strength. Because that's the most terrifying thing there is. If there's something to be scared of, be scared of that moment. So, um, but Jesus shows us how how this battle is going to go. When Jesus, Jesus didn't do anything to harm anyone, he loved people, he served them, and as people started wanting more of jesus he started building the crowds that's when the religious leaders took it on their own and then went to rome and the political stuff and were like hey you're gonna lose your power to this dude you know like hey you guys are gonna lose your station to this person they're coming and making making a problem that's when they start poking at it and when and when that happens and people come and start taking what you have that's when we need the character of the lamb like jesus did so that we can endure the cruelty of sin and still shine the love of God through it. Because that's the time when people need it the most. That's when people who are completely lost need to see the love of God is when they, you know, that's a turning point for them where it could completely change their life. And if we're at a place to where we're still offended that someone hurt me or took something of mine or whatever, we're, we're going to drown with the boat. So. Thank you, Kim, for sharing that. That was very powerful. And um, yeah, no, for real. So I, I, I know from my own personal experience that it's a terrifying thing. Like, with, like just the spiritual warfare and all that, just how, how heavy you feel and, and depressed and anxious and, just like the, those de power, those demonic forces and how they manipulate, I can't imagine. Why well, I I, I kind of can, but um, it, it's yeah, you're right, Kim. It's going to be extremely terrifying. I know one of the most terrifying moments in my life was when I was taking a a bunch of Adderall, and I was completely blasphemous. I was reading the Bible at the same time, thinking the world's going to end. I don't know, it's high off my mind. And, but when I was coming off, it like Satan 
and his demons were making me feel like I, my next thought I was going to wake up. If I go to sleep, my next thought will be an eternal hell fire. And I could feel my skin like kind of like roasting, kind of like I don't know. It was the weirdest feeling, and and feeling like God is condemning me that He's going to come soon and He's going to punish me. It, it was one of the most terrifying experiences of my personal life. I, I I wouldn't wish it upon my worst enemy, and I can't imagine those who reject God uh, and having demons completely have control over their mind and body and whatever they can do, especially if they get technology in them. I mean, they can make them feel and suffer in ways I can't even imagine. Like, mm -hmm. like literally, like they would feel like they're in a hellfire, and yet they can make it look like they're normal people, but they're experiencing it. I know they do that with, yeah. with trauma-based mind control slaves. They're, they do that with some alters, some personalities in their mind. But, you know, it just shows like we, we really need God. We need healing. Uh, he's the Prince of Peace that will give us peace. And yeah, no, we, it's just, it's not worth it. The things of this world are so temporary. I mean, I was offered by, de by a counselor, a high level demon to, uh, ex to reject Christ. And I would get a monthly allowance and I would have whatever I want and whoever I want. But, you know, I, I rejected that. I accepted, I knew, I like my stomach dropped, but I knew instantaneously I chose Christ. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it, and, and, and my, I, I was like, no, it would just like go like that. A couple of years would go like that. And now look, it's been four years since I accepted Christ. Look how fast that went. It, it's, are you serious? The, to accept this world is insanity and that re, you would have to be a fool and not trying to be rude. It's just a fact. You would have to be a fool and insane. <clears throat> but anyways, um, Yarnaman. What what are your thoughts on on the topic of the rulers of the world? Who who rules the world? What you know their agendas? What are, what are your thoughts on the matter? I was thinking about a verse when Jesus said, "Now the the rule of this world has been judged." Oh, something like something like that. I'm gonna I'm gonna think about it. We all know, like through the Bible, that Satan is ruling the the world right now because of the thing we're seeing, like all the disaster, all the killing, all the war, and all the stuff that's happening. Because we know the stuff that are happening are not of God. Like the killing, the trafficking, the the all the stuff that's happening in this world right now, all the end stuff, stuff I mean, the end time stuff that we're seeing right now, none of this is from God. We know it's from Satan. So we know that Satan is truly like in control of the world right now but we also know in the in the book of revelation when the when uh the angel for the last i think it's the last plague and then when he talks about or maybe i don't know i'm trying to think when he says now the kingdom of now that this word the kingdom of this world is now to our god and to his to his son jesus christ and to the lamb so we see also at the end God is going to take control and Jesus will be the one rule in the world. We also see that in, in the book of Daniel when the the rock hit the statue and then it says it became like a mountain. And then we see that the kingdom of the lamb that will take place forever and ever. So we see the dominion of the lamb that will come at the, at the very end when the kingdom of Satan is destroyed and everything that we see in this world. So we know right now that there's a kingdom that's ruling and we see that. Are those the principality that Ephesians 6 talks about? The principality, the princes of darkness, and those are the stuff that are ruling this world right now. But we also, it is a blessing to know that God has given us uh, the armor to prevent fight, to prevent, uh, stand against those things. Because the Bible says, like, now put on the, arm, the full armor of God to be able to stand against those evil forces. So it is a blessing to know that God has provided for us, like, the material, even to fight, to stay, like, connected to God and to put on the shoe and then to put on the helmet, the belt of truth, and then the, the breastplate of righteousness and the shield of faith. The, of faith. So once, once we hold on to the stuff, we know we can stand and fight in this world and uh, the best thing is like one time i was listening to this lady she, he was talk she was talking about when there's this book and there was a little boy who was reading a book and 
he could not lay down the book because the first, the beginning of the book was really interesting. And then the more he got to read it, and then he went to the end, he saw like the he saw the person he wanted the the person to win it was that person was actually the winner. So we see from that in the Bible, like how the Bible is start, and then we see the terrible scene of Adam and Eve, like all oh, the falling men, like we see how human beings have fallen, and then we see the end of it, and we see the lamb coming back, Jesus returning, like I'm coming soon, and we see also his follower will be like will be working i mean walking with him in the kingdom of heaven the new earth the new in the new heaven so we see that god has won the battle we see that the battle belongs to the lord we see also that we are in the winning on the winning side that jesus has won the battle he he won it at uh at a cross he will win it again it will be like a complete uh how, a complete victory because when jesus comes back all this principality or the forces of darkness we know satan will be defeated at last and he'll be ashamed for a thousand years and we also read that in the bible so once when we take the whole bible we when we know about the whole story we are excited because god has won the battle no matter what satan is doing right now we know the end of it because we know what the bible says that he will he is defeated all he's doing right now is to get a lot of people to to follow him because he knows that his time is short. He knows that he does not have any other choice that but to deceive people and that is his job. But as the children of God, we also have to be to know to be aware that yes, God has won the battle. We have to get people on our side. So it's gonna two camp like the great controversy. It's two camp like we have to get people to come to our side to follow Jesus, to fear God and worship him. And Satan is going to make people to worship the beast and receive his mark. And as the children of God will be like, proclaiming like, fear God and give him all the glory. Fear God and keep his commandments. So right now, that's the two voices we have to preach, like the three, the three answers messages. We have to be preaching that to have people to come to our camp, to fear God, to worship him who created the heaven and everything. And Satan is also... Satan also has the mission, which is the, which is the, how do you say, the beast worshiping the beast and receiving his mark. So that's what I will, I cannot comprehend the, in this part of the great controversy. Yeah, thank you so much, Yardaman, for for sharing that. Yeah, I, when it comes to the rulers of this world, I, in my research. Yes, I, there are principalities, spiritual uh, princes, demons, fallen angels that rule this world. Um, I also look at who human-wise rules this world. And, and from what I've seen, what the Bible shows, it would be um, the main powerhouse would be the Roman Catholic Church. And uh, behind that would be this, the Jesuits. And the Jesuit superior general, who, you know, if he's not in line, there's a council of like 11 or 12 Jesuits that get rid of him and put him in. And then there's the black Italian nobility um, that is worked hand in hand with the Jesuits. That's that's from what I've seen is really uh, pretty high up on the hierarchy and uh, that rules. Of course, all the, there's these Illuminati bloodlines, these royal bloodlines that some can trace back well supposedly trace back all the way to the times of nimrod even mm -hmm. and uh so yeah you have all these illuminati bloodlines that work together and uh, i recommend you read uh fritz springmeyer's the illuminati bloodlines he shows you exactly who these bloodlines are it's probably impossible to get the book unless you want to spend a lot of money but you can look up uh, his book online and get a pdf file but from what I've seen, that is who truly rules the world. And also in the Bible, it talks about the whore of Babylon. So the, the whore of this, this new world order, this system, which I believe whore means an unfaithful church. So, right, this Roman Catholic church, this entity that rules the world, but there's daughters, right? So you have all these 
these um, children, these daughters that come from the Roman Catholic Church, that even with Protestantism that turns their back on the truth, comes back to the whore of Babylon. And you know, that in these latter days, see, a lot of people don't even think about the Roman Catholic Church because, you know, it, the power is past. But it says that the wound was healed, that, that, that one beast, the wound was healed. But, you know, something that came to my mind through the Holy Spirit is that as the whore gets older, she goes in the background. And the daughters, she gives advice to the daughters. Just like with, uh, what's that? Uh, was it King Herod? She, he was having an affair with, um, what's that one lady? The one that ordered her daughter to ask for the head of John the Baptist? Yes. Yes. Jezebel, Jezebel's daughter. Yeah. No, 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 no. No, Herodias. No, Herod, Herod, in, in Herodias. Yeah. yeah, Herodias. Herodias. Yeah, and the, Herodias and her daughter are a type, right? So you have Herodias giving the advice to the daughter to ask for the head of John the Baptist. John the Baptist is uh, the antitype of Elijah, and then uh, the remnant is the anti antitype of Elijah, uh, John the Baptist, and Elijah. And so you mm -hmm. see. It's the United States fallen Protestantism that will enforce and impose and just try to go after God's people and put their head on a platter. But who gives them those orders? It's the, it's the old, it's the mother. It's the mother that gives them the orders to go hunt their heads, to right. destroy them. That's a good one. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And so it's the Roman Catholic Church. They have perfected, they perfected all these systems from Babylon and their religion to, to Medo-Persia and their sun worship to Greece and their philosophy and Rome, and their imperialism, their, their justice, their form of justice, uh, uh, republicanism and an empire, this, this kind of occultic version of a universal mm -hmm. empire all combined together that you see in the Bible, it shows the beast shows all of those aspects like the the leopard representing Greece and and the uh, the dragon like beast you know that represents Rome it's all together and so you see that in the Roman Catholic Church it is perfected uh, luciferianism at its core and presents itself in the garb of christianity so that's that's what i believe strongly uh, not only in evidence but what the bible shows is that the rulers of this world is um, leading the charge with Satan, of course, influencing. The dragon gives power to the beast in his image, but the physical entities would be the Roman Catholic uh, Church, the Pope, and the Black Pope who controls the White Pope, and the uh, uh, Jesuits, and the Black nobil uh, Italian nobility, etc., etc. And so that's, that's why the, the conclusion I've come to. And uh, regardless, I mean, it is important to know, but ultimately it comes back to the spirit behind it. What spirit are we up against? Because that spirit you'll see in every part of society, regardless of who controls what.